Hello everyone, my name is the Renegade Statman and a very warm welcome to today's show. I'm joined as usual by my resident guest, Kieran Dyer. Welcome, Kieran. How you doing? You all right? I'm good, thank you. Now, you've got some great contacts in your phone and when this name was, was mentioned, I must admit, I got incredibly excited and a huge, huge welcome and a massive thank you for coming on to the show. I, I can't even believe I'm saying it myself, but yeah, welcome Maurizio Tarico. <laughs> hey. Thank How are you? you? Thank you for inviting me. I'm okay. I'm all yeah. right. Um, you, you're in Italy at the moment? Yes, I am, yes. And in, in, enjoying, a, enjoying a rest between, between jobs? Yeah, you could say that. It's been a long rest. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, having, having a great time, spending time with my family. What I wanted to do in life, really. Just uh, try to achieve or get to a point in my life where I could spend a lot of time with my family, my kids, and just live life. Fantastic. You must um, be a special guest, by the way, for me to be wearing this Argentina shirt. So, yeah. That's how special oh, both. you are. Both. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, going back and doing some research, um, you're on the books of, of River Plate until, until you're about 12. Right. So, yeah. you then went to. I'll I went to Argentina Juniors when I was 12. Yeah. Um, and in September 1994, so that puts you at 21. Um, right. when, when did you know that, that Ipswich Town were, were interested in you? Well, at, at the time, I was approached by an agent in Argentina, uh, which introduced me to uh, Charlie Wood and... Uh, and John Lyle. Um, and then, you know, I had the opportunity. I spoke with my family. I, 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 I also had a small chance or a chance really to go to Portugal. Um, Porto at the time, it was, I think Bobby Robson was there at that time. Um, but I analyzed it a little bit and I, I chose Ipswich. I, I thought England would would be a great experience, uh, completely different life to Argentina, of course, but uh, I just jumped to the, the opportunity. I took it and here I am today. How was it going from a change room in Argentina to then a change room with Steve Sedgley, Chris <laughs> Wales, Adam <laughs> Tanner, Jason Gundy? <laughs> Wait, Ian Marshall. Yeah, Ian. Ian Marshall. Don't forget about him. I won. I won. Oh, oh my God. It was, it was nuts. But it was so, I was lost completely. Yeah. I didn't speak English. And even if you do a little bit, because something you learn in school, when you go into a dressing room with footballers, see you later, you have no chance to understand, especially, you know, scousers and, you know, different tones and different ways of speaking. And it's, it was impossible. It was tough. Um, but anyway, I, I, you know, you know me a little bit. I just wanted to perform on the pitch and do my best in the pitch, in every training, show that I could play. Um, and that's, I concentrated on that. Of course, the club was magnificent because they um, put a, a teacher for, for me, for my wife at the time. So we tried to learn as much as possible the essentials. That's my wife. <laughs> um, you. yeah well it's not not difficult to be quicker than me eh, to be honest I wasn't the quickest ever um so yeah I it was tough but uh, enjoyable enjoyable I'm, and now looking back it was an amazing experience at the time sometimes can be hard but um, the club was okay was always helping me uh, I, I think as a footballer, when you train in a proper way and you show the rest of your teammates that you just want to collaborate and be part of the team, then you you get in. Yeah. And that's what happens in the end. Do you think that's why, because of the culture, not knowing the language, why it took you a while to get going at Ipswich? Yeah, definitely, Kieran. And, and not, all, not only that, I was, you know, I was 173, 174 in centimetres. Uh, so coming in England, I mean, a defender, so tough. I mean, 
sometimes I wonder how I how I done it. How? Because I mean I always had a problem on the pitch coming against strong players, quick players. It was difficult to deal one v ones. And in England in particular, because not only players are physically stronger than in any, in other parts of the world. Um, but you play a lot of 1v1s all over the pitch. There's no more, there's not a lot of tactics and, you know, people covering each other and helping each other a lot. So it's a lot more open and you, you have to go and back and go and back and go and back. You know, it's expecting from a fullback, it's expecting to go forward, crosses, score goals, and then come back and defend. And plus uh, that's England. That's not Italy. That's not Argentina. In Argentina, you do a job, you mark your man, you pass the ball. And yeah, if you can join in, you join in. Yeah. Uh, so it was a, a lot of things. Uh, Paul, Mason that I had to of, Paul Mason didn't do a lot of defending oh, for you either. Paul, <laughs> Paul, Paul, Mason, Paul Mason was <laughs> one of the, if not the best player I, I combined with. You know, it was 100%. I, I, I remember putting my head up and looking at the space and he was there. It was amazing. It was like uh, synchronizing with that guy. It was incredible. I always told him. I told him. Uh, simple things, but maybe we see, we see football the same way when we were inside the pitch uh, and we were looking at the space. He was finding the spaces I was seeing. So it was so easy to play with him. Uh, for me, yeah. I think um, there's a few questions I, I, I want to ask you about but when you joined. I think with, with all due respect, as a fan, uh, we thought we were going to sign Gabriella Batistuta. I remember there was a headline and we, and we signed yeah. Adrian Paz and, and, and yourself. And I think a lot of fans at the time thought that you were kind of like the, the make way in the deal and probably somebody who was coming over to England with Paz to, to help settle him in um but you had no work permit issues because your, your your father um obviously with an italian pass passport played for yeah juventus and and torino did you to sign before you signed for it which did you change your honeymoon or, or wedding plans to get here sooner was that what happened i was uh, going out with my now wife uh, we were not expecting to get married so quickly, but when this opportunity came around, uh, I proposed really, I said, listen, we're going to England. Are you coming? And she said, yeah. So in like, I think I signed a contract on a Sunday, if I'm not wrong, and we got married on a Thursday <laughs> and here we are still together. So. I'm happy. Uh, see, good decision. That was the best decision. Yeah, that's the right answer. You've got that on camera as, as, as well. Um, but is it true? To... Is it true? Is it true? <laughs> exactly. One of, one of the things I want to ask. I will ask you, KD. Um, obviously, Maurizio's mentioned that obviously Porto and Bobby Robson were 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 interesting at the time. How, how would Bobby have taken to Maurizio as a as a player, having played under him yourself? He would have loved him. Uh, Mauricio, we were just joking earlier about his pace. Uh, he never relied on pace because he was very quick upstairs. Um, we did a podcast the other day, Mauricio, with Darren Eady, and we were picking a combined Ipswich Norwich 11 um, of players we played with at the time. And um, he said that you are horrible to play against. You would pull him by the hair and you had all the tricks. But I said, if he would have played, if you would have played with him, he would have loved it because you know, like you said with Paul Mason, you gave the right way to pass. You gave the ball at the right time for people to exploit 1v1s. And uh, yeah, it would have fitted in with Bobby Robson. He would have loved Bobby Robson. And um, thankfully, Charlie Woods could convince him to come to Ipswich. Mauricio, what, what do you reckon Bobby Robson would have said about your, your debut at at home to, to Bolton in the League Cup? <laughs> that I was not ready? Probably. I, I remember that game. I remember pieces of that game very well. Very well. Uh, I remember going to press. I, was, I played right back that game. 
I can't remember who was the winger I was coming against or playing against. But I remember going press him, and I remember the fullback putting the ball behind me. So I said, in my mind, the center back is going to be there. He's going to be reading that ball, and he's going to be there. So I look on the side, and he was next to me. So we were in a line like that, straight. So he was not covering me. So I was in, I mean, it's nearly a 1v1 with the keeper. That cannot, you cannot allow that. I mean, it's better for the player to receive the ball in front of you and not giving him the chance to put the ball in behind and then run. And I wasn't going to get there. I'm no walker, by the way. I never was. Or actually call. You know, I had no that pace to recover. So I, I had to be in the right place at the right time all the time. I had, like Kiron said it perfectly. I had to use my mind and I had to use every resource to play football and to become a football player, a professional football player. People don't understand this. People think, oh, he was a dirty player. He was... Listen, I did what I had to do to play football because I, I was in love with football. Uh, if you tell me, play fair against a player that runs the 100 meters in 10 seconds, <laughs> what chance do I have to be a football player? None. None. Especially in a team that was not playing the way we play, for example, in Argentina or, or in Italy, where it's more tactically, more covering each other, more helping each other, closer, reducing the spaces. No, England is a, is a game. You play a game, an open game, fantastic to watch. Difficult for me to play, but fantastic to watch. So I had to adapt. It, that's part. Lenny and Eddie Yowds have probably been out the night before that game as well, so that's why they weren't covering. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you should. Someone should have tell me. <laughs> that's, that's the other thing. That's the yeah, other thing. You, exactly. you go in the first game and you expect certain things because you're coming to play in a new, exactly. in a new world. Yeah. But but it's it's new, and I don't know, and they don't know. So it takes time. For I mean. Obviously, that game, it was really important. I, that made me think and said, okay, if we are going to play like that as a team, I cannot go and press. I need mm. to go back. Because yeah. between a 1v1 with a player or getting the ball there and then dealing with the situation, I prefer that one. Uh, common sense, really. Uh, but I had to work a lot on, on here because otherwise I wouldn't have been a football player. I've, I've just had a look to see who the centre-halves were. <laughs> uh, essentially, oh no, that, no names, no names. <laughs> you, you might know the other guy, John Walk. Uh, oh. <laughs> John Walk was fifty-five there. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, 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 I think you know. I remember sitting in, in in the ground, thinking really excited. You know, it's always exciting when you when you get a foreign player, you know, coming and coming and joining us. And I, I think a few of us at the time thought. Yeah, that player's not ready. And, and clearly John Lyle thought that as well. And you spent a lot of time with Brian Clue's reserves. Um, I, I believe, looking at it, you played at Ram Meadow as well. So what was that like? You know, suddenly playing, um, you know, with in front of 50 people, possibly. Yeah. Um, at times, I thought it was harsh. Harsh. Especially because the team was struggling. I mean, losing... Losing and losing and not performing and and uh, I always say the same thing and I still do uh, even when we coach. I'm gonna give you if if I'm a coach or or, a, or as a player, give me four or five games. Then if I don't perform or if I perform like that game, I'm not I'm not stupid. I know if I'm lacking in something and if I'm making the team lose because I'm not marking right or I'm not playing the ball right. So give me a proper chance. That was what I was asking that first year. But of course, you know, I was 21. Now I coached. So I understand a lot more of how things work and what the coaches need. So I'm more understanding looking back about that first year, but at the time, I felt, I didn't feel great, to be honest. You know, well, playing at very St. Edmunds at minus 10 degrees or whatever it was, it, was, uh, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, especially because you see, if you see the team performing and winning, 
you think to yourself, okay, the team is doing great. I need to get better. I need to get stronger. And I need to go there. I need to earn a place. Uh, but that wasn't the case. So I, I felt a little bit harsh then. Were but, you, were you, yeah. were you still training with the first team and then go back and play 20 for the 21s? Yeah. Well, you no, weren't. No, no, I was training with the first team. Ones. Okay. I was training with the first team, yeah. Yeah. So, no, in that respect, John Lyle, then George Burley, they never, I mean, it was, it was, I, I suppose it was difficult for them too because, uh, you know, I was a bit angry as I am. You know, <laughs> I, I needed to earn my place. So every training, it was, it was a battle. Mm. It's different, no? Because in training, you, you take it easy. You don't go as far as you can go in a game. But I was going close to what I was going to a game because I needed to show myself. I needed to become a football player and live of it. That was my aim. Um, it was tough, but then things changed later on. With, with John Lowe, a lot of people who have worked under John Lowe at their time at Ipswich says what a guy he was and what a coach he was. Even though you didn't play as much as you like, did you think he was a good manager and a good coach? The, the issue is that I, I, I was with him for a couple of months. You know, really? He left oh, soon after. Uh, yeah. not, not much. Then George Berley came in. Uh, not really, it, what I remember of John Lyle, he was like a, a father figure, a proper manager father figure, right? When you sit down there, he was big guy in front of you. It was like an important figure. And he was always nice and gentle. So, you know, I felt comfortable with him. Uh, obviously, with uh, Charlie as well. Uh, Charlie helped me a lot. I still, I'm still in, in touch. Yeah, with I still speak to Charlie too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, in terms of the training sessions, I couldn't really leave a lot of it because he left too soon. Soon after. Yeah. Yeah, he he was uh, he was sacked in December '94, and, and George Burley arrived. But obviously, you still still didn't break into the to the first team. Did Did George have a conversation when it, when he joined? Just um, speak to you about what his plans were? Yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, the I'm thinking if I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking if I should do the what happens if Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was a kind of a heated conversation. I remember one phrase he said, but then, you know, in the years after, we we got on well at the end. But you, at were that his, time, you were his son. You were his son. He loved you. The yeah, he, <laughs> he, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. Completely the opposite. Uh, at the beginning, of course, he didn't know me and I wasn't prepared to for the English football. So I understand, I understand him now. At the time, again, I was, I thought it was harsh. Uh, just saying for, because of a player is coming from another continent and he doesn't speak or, you know, that he cannot play you and he, he cannot give you a chance. I thought it was a bit of an excuse at that time, but he was probably right. You know, I was probably not ready. And, uh, and all that period gave me time to understand more English, to see the games, to see how, how to to be able to go into a pitch and perform and knowing what's going to happen when I go into the pitch, not like that first game that I didn't know. Uh, so, and I completely understand the fans. Now coming back to, to what you said about Batistuta, I think the press was, I remember reading the press and saying, what the, f what the are they saying? I mean, what? I mean, I'm a fullback from Argentina Junior, 21, that's it, you know? Uh, Adrian was a great player um, in Argentina. He was he played as a winger. I came, I, I played against him, and he was a tough player, very good. Um, but obviously, it was not Batistuta. Batistuta was Batistuta, nine of the national team. Mm. You know, it's like I don't know, two different players. Um, and I don't know why they said they also. I remember they 
writing on the papers that I played for the national team. I didn't play for the national team. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that. I, I like the truth. You know, don't, don't go about, don't, don't say things that are not correct and not right. But then again, you know, the press, what can you talk about the press? How, how, the how, were, how were the press different in this country to Argentina? I think they were a little bit more respectful. Argentina is a disaster. I mean, it's like Italy. In, in England, people are more respectful in general. Uh, I mean, I don't, you know, for people that play in Argentina or, or live in Argentina, you, it's, it's a different story, completely different story. England is another level. Hmm. Uh, end of the season, you, you played once. Ipswich were relegated from, from the Premiership. Did, did you think you made a bad decision at that time? No. That, that is something that, no. I remember I asked the club permission to go and get married because I was married by uh, the state, you know, but not by church. So I wanted to get married by church and we went back to Argentina, got married and I got ready for for two more years. I had two more years in my contract. I never thought of leaving. I always thought I'm going to go there and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play. That was my attitude. I never changed that. I, I didn't want to go back to Argentina. I didn't want to go anywhere. I wanted to play because I knew I could play. Uh, I mean, I seen the team, I seen the players, and I, 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 I knew what I could do. I knew my deficiencies, deficiencies no? I knew it. I, am, I'm, I was well aware. But uh, I thought it was enough to play. Like I said, we can't we can't mention you with, without mentioning Adrian Paz. Um, the only time you ever played with him was for the reserves. Um, I think he made seventeen or eighteen appearances and, and scored one goal at, at home to Liverpool, and it it didn't particularly work out very well for him either. And do you think there was it was different back then in the in the mid nineties to how it is now with players from other countries that adapting to the English style? I think England changed a lot. England had a big change in terms of uh, players that came in from abroad, trainers, coaches that came in from abroad. Even English players changed their mentality. They, they started playing a lot more uh, or knowing, not, not like, but knowing how the Europeans or the Spaniards or the Italians play football, uh, the Argentinians. Uh, so they, they also adapted uh, and, you know, the football adapted to, to a more European football. Obviously, I think England has the physicality that no other country has. Uh, and, and you still keep that. And I think it's great. Uh, but if you adapt, you become a better player. And... I had a lot of conversations. I remember talking to Tony Mowbray about this, uh, saying if, it, if, if you adapt your style with some of the other styles, you will become amazing. Because I cannot be as quick as other players that are in England. I cannot. You are. You have the Sterlings, the Walkers. So if they, you know, start thinking a little bit more about other ways of playing and how to play other players and other teams. I mean, they can be unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable. You, you probably have the best players in the world, but you need to want to adapt. If you are saying and closing your mind and say, no, no, we are going to play like that. We're going to put the ball in the channel and we're going to run. When you play against, uh, I don't know, the Spanish team, they know that you're going to play it there. The centre-back is going to be there before you with a cigar. I'm going to get the ball and I'm going to play you. So it's about being physically ready, mentally ready, clever. It's a lot of things, football. It's not just one. But again, I didn't have the physicality to become a, an outstanding player. I couldn't. I was not physically uh, at that level. But if you are physically at that level, to do what I did, I think it's easy. It's the easier part. I don't know. That's what I think. 
you know, I think it's the easiest part. It's just thinking about the game, being in the right position, being concentrated, trying to win all the time, every ball, every situation, concentrated all the time. Uh, you have something that I, I can, you know, God didn't give it to me. <laughs> yeah, but you, I don't like why you keep saying you can't run like Carl Walker, but Carl Walker can't bend one in the top corner against Man United from 25 yards, so. Well, he, I mean, maybe he didn't do it, but he could. But you can, so you're doing yourself a disservice. Okay, but I definitely won't go yeah. past him by speed. <laughs> um, Mauricio, with, with, with your knowledge of Argentinian football and obviously playing with Kieran for some time, would, would Kieran, would he have been a success if he'd have played in Argentina? Yeah, yeah, because he was a clever player. He, he, he had the physicality as well. He could run for fun. Uh, yeah, and he, he will adapt. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Uh, who's, I know, I think I know what the answer would be. Messi or Maradona? I think you're wrong. Because I, 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 I guess... I, I go Maradona. I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess you will think that I will go for Maradona. I always go Maradona. <sighs> wow, it's a tough one, eh? I think for, if if I if I'm gonna talk about just quality and football, I think I will go for Messi. Mm -hmm. If I want to play with a player in my team, number ten, I go for Maradona. Okay. I think Maradona, Maradona wanted to win as much as me. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Messi, of course, he wants to win. I'm not saying he doesn't want to win. He wants to win. But he, he doesn't have the, I will die to win. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what I see. I don't know the, I don't know the boy. So I might be wrong. Eh? This is my opinion for what I see from outside. Yeah. Fair point. It started 1995-96 and, and a bit of good fortune, you possibly could say. Neil, Neil Thompson um, got injured, which gave you an opportunity to come back into the team. Do you? Do you know how that conversation went with, with George Burley and yourself at that point? No, no, there was no conversation, really. I was I was there. I was part of the team. I, w I done the pre-season. Um, I, I suppose he accepted the fact that I was going to be there because I was not going to leave. Um, so he had to deal with the squad that he had. And then I suppose I with training and with sessions and knowing me, the way we play, and then obviously giving me the opportunity, he started to know me. You were, uh, Tony Mowbray mentioned him, obviously he joined in October 1995. And as a fan, he, he seemed to, you know, come with that maturity and, and, and calmness and stuff. How, how did he help your game? A lot, a lot. I became good friends with him. Um, a good man on top of everything uh, so I straight away I uh, felt comfortable talking to him and obviously a lot of experience um, and uh, we, yeah, we became quite quite good friends at that time no then we lost track a little bit because he done his life and and I, I did mine but uh, he helped me yeah who did you room with Stuart? Who's that? Stuart Slater. Slater? Stuart? Yeah, yeah, for a fairly part of your I career. Think, I think. I uh, think. Can't remember, really. Mm. You know, sometimes, I'm going to tell you, sometimes I think it was another life. But I didn't <laughs> live that life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, win, I went everywhere since I left Ipswich. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I've been living in China, in Greece, in Spain, in Italy, in Argentina. North East. <sighs> Sometimes I think, did I play for Ipswich? When was that? I mean, I, I swear, it's incredible. Now that you're talking about it, you know, memories are coming back. But And then on top of that, I got, I think I, God give, gave me like a one terabyte in my memory. So when, I, when it gets filled, I need to delete to, <laughs> to get new information in. So <laughs> kind of... Uh, Difficult. I'm not a guy that remembers every detail. Yeah. Um, but I think it's too hard, yeah. Mm. Uh, do, do you remember the, the Anglo-Italian Cup? 
but I, I remember about the Anglo Italian. What are the chances? I mean, <laughs> in the championship, playing a, an Anglo Italian cup was weird. Do you it remember was... in, in, in the same, same month, um, we went to South End United away? Um, you didn't play, but you, you sat in the away end with your, with your father. With the, with the fans? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I used to do that a lot. My, my, my dad used to take the bus with the fans every time he was in England and going to the away games with the fans. Yeah, it was, it was like a religion for him. <laughs> I remember coming back, coming back after the game with the coach and he was waiting for me or I, or I was waiting for him, depending on the, if the fans, but normally the fans arrived before. But, uh, and he was telling me, what happened on the coach and what he talked with the, with the fans. He didn't speak any English at all. <laughs> but he was telling me, no, he told me that. He said, how that? How, how, he, how did you understand what he, did, what he said? It's impossible. You don't speak a word. No a word. <laughs> uh, it was so funny. At, at the end of that season, um, we missed out on the, the playoffs. We drew nil-nil at home to, to Millwall. They got relegated and and uh, with the draw and, and and we just missed out. We bring bring okay. you up to nineteen ninety six ninety seven, um, and we'll we'll come up to your debut in a bit, Kieran. Um, but George Burley, it looked like he kind of, you know, going back, he switched his his, his style to more of a, a, a wing back kind of play. And I just wonder how that kind of did that suit you more? It appeared to suit you more. Um, yeah, I, I'm. I don't know. I I think the the players that he had available gave them the team more than his influence on. Okay, I want to play this way. You know, I remember when he arrived, he wanted to for the football really to keep it simple and play the channel and go forward and let the strikers to run the channels. And I remember those conversations at the beginning. Uh, but then he looked at the players he had. And I think he had the decent players that could manage the ball and pass the ball around and look for spaces and find spaces and triangles. And, and then he kind of put the team and the team found his way, in a way. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, in, in Argentina, we, we had the mentality that we want to control the game. We want to play. I, I, I didn't go once to the pitch to fight. I want to play football. But then depends how the game turned out. If we were controlling the game and we were passing and there's no need. But if you are not, then you need to do something about it. You just cannot accept defeat. You need to fight if you need to fight. And you need to turn, do something to turn the, the situation around. Um, and that's why I reacted sometimes the way I reacted because I was in, oh, the team or me was in difficulty and we needed to, I needed, I felt I needed to do something to, to turn it around. Um, and that's why, but the idea is always go in the pitch and control and enjoy playing football. And I think players enjoy playing football when you control, when you are in possession, when, when you feed players like Kiron that are in midfield and he's, he wants to get involved and wants the ball in a nice, with a nice pass to find him so he can go and create. And that's, and, uh, and that's how I went out. George was very adaptable as well. You say we played three at the back, but because he had Matt Holland, Steve Sedgley and Kalos Thompson, we would be playing three at the back. And after 20 minutes, he'd push Sedge from the centre half into midfield would go into a 4-4-2. He did that with Klaus, he did that with Matt Holland. So again, it was just how the game was going, weren't it? So we were, I wouldn't say we were just solely a free at the back team. We we were very adaptable because of the players. Uh, 24th of August, 1996, it was your first goal for, for Ipswich. Um, we beat Reading 5-2. Uh, essentially scored Tony Vaughan scored two in that game as well and 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 and, and Scoey, any any memories about that that scoring your first Ready? goal yeah um not much no <laughs> i remember stoke scoring at stoke away 
You did. I thought we that won. One was the first one actually? That was your, that was your uh, second goal. We won one nil in that game. <laughs> in in between but those, I didn't score much. I should remember it, but anyway. In in between those two goals, um, twenty sixth of December, uh, nineteen ninety six. Uh, the young man at the bottom of the screen, uh, Kieran Mady's debut. Obviously, you were kind of uh, established in the first team at that point, and I just wonder what your your views were on um, this nine stone guy suddenly appearing at 17 years of age. I, I remember that he could run for fun. So he had the stamina to go and back, go and back, go and back. Uh, and then he had the good feet, so quality in the sense that you could pass the ball and he would manage it easily. Uh, that's my, my memories of him. Um, so, I mean, he, he was young. He was coming from Ipswich, which is very important for a local team. Uh, so ideal, I mean, player with a great future. And then obviously there was Richard Wright and there was James Scowcroft and there was Richard Naylor. So did you know all about us when we were in the youth team or only when we got into the first team? Did you know? No, we more, 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 no, no, no. More. I, um, now you were talking about a little bit about um, tactics, no? When, when I was young, when I was 21, 22, 23, the, the first few years, um, I dedicated my, my mind to, to work in the area where I was. Mm. I mean, I, I needed to sort out my space. I wasn't too aware of what's happening on the other side of the pitch. I, I didn't really care, to be honest. Yeah. I was more... Okay, I'm playing right back. I need to communicate with my right winger, my right center half, my midfielder, and the striker. Those are those are the ones that are playing around me. So why am I doing why am I saying this? I'm saying this because if the center back does the same thing, he covers his area. If the other center back does the same thing, he covers his area. And then we are all linked. I will be linked with the left winger but through the other players, mm. not directly. So I was always thinking about my area, how to stop the winger, how to get the ball, how can we go forward? I was asking my, my, the, the, the player in front of me to find the space so as soon as I get the ball, I can find him to, to attack. I was worried about my zone, if you say, if you, if yeah, you understand. Sure, exactly. uh, more than thinking in general, no? And that's something that I always discuss with uh, Gas, because Gas was completely different. He was always looking at the whole team. He was already a coach on the pitch, you know. You know, there are players that are already coaches on the team, in, 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 you know, inside the pitch. Uh, same me, with Tony was, Mowbray. We knew Tony Mowbray. Yeah, same yeah. as Tony. Just thinking about other things. And I, I was, no, no. Let me take care of my business. Mm. My business is this bit. You know, <laughs> I was a little bit like that. Yeah. 18th of April, 1997. Um, we played Norwich City at home. It was a Friday night. But before the game, you were presented with the Supporters Player of the Year trophy. I went back and had a look and it was one of the biggest votes um, that they'd had. And you'd received... 80% of the vote. Um, how, did, how did that feel for you, considering if we go back to the Bolton game, um, less than two years later, that you were a fan's favourite? It was... Well, of course, it's an honour. No? Because it's fans and players. I mean, are the two... To be recognized by the players as well is unbelievable, but the fans also. So it's both. It's just the best honors. Who cares about the press? Who cares about the politics? You know, the, 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 the players that see you and live with you all the time, every day, train, they tell you that you are you know, the chosen player for that year. It's, can't get better than that. Uh, same as the fans. I mean, fans that go there every day and see you and see you do good things and do bad things, no? Because I got sent off quite often. 
so and that, yeah, and that's not great. Uh, so on top of that, getting the this recognition, it was, you, it was amazing. But I, think I, I don't you, really. I think you know, you, off air, you said a good story about fans and you played for the fans and you were a fan that was playing. You, if you explain what you meant by that, because that was a really powerful story, which I think our fans would really appreciate. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just as simple as you said it. I mean, I, I, I think if I am outside watching my team, as I was when I was a young, a young kid, I wanted that player to do everything, to try, if, to try to win the game, because winning the game, it makes you happy. It makes fans happy. It's as simple as that. Football is not complicated. So now I go into the pitch and I have a big responsibility to win the game for them, for me, for my teammates and for them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just as simple as that. There's nothing else to say. I mean, I go there and I, I know that I have that responsibility and I have to give everything. Then if it was not enough, it was not enough. I need to get better. And then it's going back to training and, and, and again, and start again with the right mentality and go out and win the game and win the game and do us. At that time, in, in Argentina, it's, it's all about winning. So even when, you, when, when I was a little kid playing in, in the local neighborhood team, it was about winning. So I'm winning somehow, anyhow, win. Is that right? Well, we can go into a more moral uh, conversation, but that's the way I was brought up. Now I don't know if I would do exactly the same. I think I would, but uh, I think I would. But, you know, inside the pitch, I think I have an obligation to win the game for my fans. I mean, it doesn't matter, no? If you are in the World Cup final and uh, the whole country is looking at you and if you score somehow, and it goes validated, and you win the World Cup, you won the World Cup. Maradona 86. Yeah. Maradona 86. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but you won the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, is that the best thing to win a World Cup? No. No. And I would love to win it playing the Guardiola way with Barcelona. Yeah. I mean, amazing, amazing. Congratulations. But also Diego Simeone wins somehow. Mm. And somehow we need to win. It's just the business we are in. Otherwise, if we don't win, we get sacked. Coaches get sacked. People at the ground and the stadium get sacked because you get relegated if you don't win. So at the end of the day, we are in a business that you need to win. So that Norwich game, um, you... you you paid back the fans. Obviously, they, they awarded you the trophy and, and you paid back by scoring the, the, the first goal in a 2-0 in a win against Norwich. Paul Mason scored the, the second. Do you remember much about that and that goal? It's, a, it's an iconic I, I photo. Remember. In that, that I remember. That I don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> I don't forget. I was nuts. I don't forget. Yeah, it was when I scored, I was nuts. I went nuts. Brilliant. My face, I remember my face in the, in the, in the clips just shouting like a crazy, but I didn't score all the time. So the, also for me, scoring, it was not like, you know, and a striker that scores 20 goals a year, he scored one more, it's one more. For me, it was important. Do you remember what George Burley gave you as a gift when you won Player of the Year award? Yeah. He Have you still got it? And yeah, I still got it. Yeah. Uh, it's a great gesture. Great yeah. gesture. Alberto Tarantini shirt, which I think he, he swapped. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's Fantastic! Right. What a yeah, lovely. So right. at that point, I guess as as Kieran says, you you became his his son, and he was he was um looking after. Yeah, which you. I, I I I wasn't that comfortable about that. You know, I don't. I, I think a, a coach needs to have a good relationship with the, with all the players. Uh, but. Uh, I mean, if I did something wrong, you have to go for me. Go for me. You know? It's no favoritisms. 
Um, at, at one point, it looked like you know I was kind of untouchable, and until he until he signed Matt Holland. <laughs> But <laughs> okay, okay. But uh, <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't. I'm nothing special. I'm one more. I always thought one more. No one less. Nothing more or less from the rest. And a teammate is no more or less than me. We are all the same, and we are aiming to achieve something. Um, that's the way. I, I, that's the way it turned out. I see why you feel uncomfortable when, but I don't think that gesture was that. I just think because of your journey and the struggles you had, you've even had you, you had struggles with George to start with, and it was like a redemption yeah. story. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. that was fitting that he kind of give you that share to say, "Bloody hell, what a success story this has been!" That you got yeah. the fans. So. I don't think you I appreciate it. One hundred percent. It was just more like no, no, no. The whole journey, weren't it? In 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 terms of that gesture, yes, I take it the same way as you took it. Yes, the same way. It was it was a great gesture. And I appreciate it so much. Mm. Um, but then after that as well, um, you know, I remember games where things happen on the on the dressing room, and maybe you know, I remember incidents where maybe the assistant manager was having a go at the team and I said something and and maybe he was saying, no, 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 Mauricio didn't do nothing wrong. Said, Fucking hell. <laughs> Can't say that. Go with your uh, with your assistant, mate. Go against me. You need to go against me. You go against me. That's yeah. the way it is. Uh, and because it, it, it puts you in a difficult position also with your teammates. So you need to be fair. And if you this if a player deserves to be told something because he's not doing it right, you have to say it. And the player needs to be strong enough to learn and take it. That's football. That's life, really. It's not mm. just football. It's life. Yeah. We we get to May 1997. You like I said, you you've just been awarded the Player of the Year uh, trophy. We're in the playoffs. We play Sheffield United um, in the playoffs. We draw. 1-1 away from home. I think Mickey Stockwell scored a, a late equaliser for us. Um, and he drops, George drops Paul Mason for me away at Bramall Lane, which must have upset Mauricio. <laughs> no, I, to, <laughs> no, to be no, honest. Okay, go, <laughs> no, it no, all, but was... on top of that, I, I remember bits. I don't remember the game. Yeah, yeah. I remember the the end, what happened at the end, the feelings. Yeah. I do remember that, but the actual team the selection. details. He obviously um, he left he left Paul Mason out because it was away from home. And it was exactly. a bit you, more you had legs. More, yeah, more it makes, looking stuff. at that, it makes sense. Makes sense. And then he obviously brought Paul Mason back in for the for the home game. But we got a great result, one one at Bramall Lane. It was. Yeah. And then so, so said. It was all set, Mauricio. Unfortunately, but it wasn't. The, the away goals rule went went against us. And I, I think um, I have to ask the question, what 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 did happen at the end? I remember Yanaga Fjortoft and, and a few of the um, Sheffield United players kind of surrounding you at the end. Well, I mean, if, 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 if we were going out, I was definitely fighting with the whole team. <laughs> So, I mean, if I'm not wrong, uh, for Sheffield United, Hutch Hutchinson played, no? Yeah, he the did. Scottish right. player. He yeah. played for Sheffield United. Yeah. And then I went after, I go a little bit forward now. When I left Tottenham, I went to West Ham. And he was there. Yeah, of course, yeah. I don't think he forgot. I don't think he forgot. Which is <laughs> something that I don't, I don't, I don't hold grudges. Yeah. You know, because they want to win, I want to win, I lost, I'm going to be devastated for weeks, I know myself, but then they are playing for themselves, so it's over, you know, like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, the same thing, what happened there, it stays there, I, I don't hope, I don't think he, he was that 
you know, he holds some grudges, <laughs> I think. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I was uh, probably fighting with the whole team and I was devastated. And I remember one fan, go, game over, have a shower, started to go home. And one fan, one fan comes to me and says, please, can I have your autograph? And he said to me, don't worry, we'll do it next year. And I looked at him and said, next year? 46 more games now we have to play. Plus, maybe some more because you have Cubs. And then, maybe. No, it was today. Today. It wasn't next year. You know, no, don't, tell you, don't tell me about next year. I, I understood. I appreciated him trying to comfort me. There was no comfort me. There was no chance. I was dead. Because I wanted, you know, the same way I felt, I'm sure the fans felt the same thing. I'm sure. Because it, even more, because the fans, they stay there all the time. I mean, I kept, then I, my life went to other places. The fans go there still to support their team. So yeah. they would be devastated as I was. The only thing I would say to the fans is, don't worry, I'm devastated as you are. No less. I, I, because the way I am, I, I, that's one thing I hated about football. I took it so badly, the defeats, so badly, that the winning times were not, it didn't compensate the bad times. Mm. Don't compensate it for me. Losing for me is the worst. So it's something that I had to work on myself, really, yeah? it's in my problem. But that's why I, I did everything to win because once you got the victory, then I could live peacefully the, the, the next week. Yeah. The 1997-98, like you already hinted, Mark, Mark Venus, Matt Holland, and, and, and later David Johnson came and signed, the, signed for the club, uh, kind of strengthened us. But I want to go to the 14th of October, 1997. Um, home to Manchester United in the, in the League Cup. Uh, as, as Kieran just said, uh, said a little bit earlier, he scored a, scored a great goal. Do you remember much about that game? Yeah, I remember that game. Um, of, of course, I remember the, the, the goal. <laughs> but I remember also for, for a bad situation. My wife was in Argentina. Because her mom was ill. Mm. So I remember scoring the goal. Well, we yeah. didn't even know. I played in the game and we didn't even know what you were going through. There. No, no, no. It was, it was something that my, my wife was leaving it, but she was not there. Yeah. So I remember it also because of that situation. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was it was great as well. Was there yeah, everything so, okay with? Did yeah. everything okay with your wife's mum? In? No, oh, no, so. no. So oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. She passed away. If not that day, soon after. But yeah. I remember my wife not being in England and being in Argentina looking after her mum. Mm. So it was right at that time. I remember scoring and thinking, oh. Look, they must be watching maybe TV or so. It was, it was, it was a memory. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it was, it was a great, great goal. And I'm, I'm, and I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure that your your, your mother-in-law was very proud. So um, I want to, <laughs> I want to take you to December of, of that year. It's the first time yeah. that transfer speculation came about, and you were linked with a, a move to. Sheffield Wednesday. Um, was that just paper talk? No, I, I guess because the only thing I knew that there was an interest team for me was Birmingham, not Sheffield. But I don't remember if it was at that, that period or later on. But Nick Mills was the no, assistant Sheffield. manager then as well. At Sheffield. At Birmingham, ah, Birmingham, Mills was 
um, and Trevor Trevor Francis was the manager. Yeah, Trevor Francis. Yeah. I knew I knew I knew that Trevor yeah. Francis was yeah. for maybe interested. Yeah, but nothing official. Eh? So maybe there were talks, but no, I, I didn't know anything like official. Mick was. Mick Mills might have wanted you to get you away from Ipswich because you might have took his mantle as the best fullback at the in the club's history. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't yeah. think so. You only had <laughs> another seven hundred games to catch him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> January nineteen ninety eight. Uh, we're at home to to Chelsea. It's the League Cup quarterfinals. Uh, we we go down two nil. Uh, I, I certainly remember that just going into half time thinking that this tie is is all but over and then then you pop up just before half time to to score us a goal would you can you kind of tell us about that whole kind of game there were some there were some great players that played for Chelsea that day and and mm -hmm. um what yeah, really. Hullet was player manager yeah. and ca came off the bench um just be, yeah. your, your thoughts about that Zola, game and scoring Zola played didn't he Zola played yeah the team was um Ed De Hoy oh, yeah. Lambord, Lambord, uh, Danny Granville, uh, Sinclair, Frank LeBeouf, uh, Myers, Dennis Wise, Roberto Di Matteo, Tor Andre Flo, Graham Lasso, and uh, Gianfranco Zola. And the subs were um, Bullet, it must have been Steve Clark and Mark yeah. Hughes. Mm. Do you remember yeah. that goal, Mauricio? Yeah, I remember that goal. I remember. I remember that I pass the ball to the striker and I go forward to the rebound. How? Why? I don't know, but I went. And somehow, falling down, I stuck it in. They, they all yeah, came. It was good. Um, obviously, we drew the game 2-2 and it went to, yeah. the, in, to the penalty shootout. Um, do you remember much about your, your penalty? I think your, yours was the, the, the second one. Adam Tanner had scored the first. Yeah, I remember also that. Yeah, uh, which it made me realize that I'm not a penalty taker. I was not a penalty taker. I took two penalties. I missed two. So you need to be a special player to take penalties. It's something special. You need to be kind of in a zone where you block everything. It's too much pressure for me. Shouldn't be. But it's not the same. I can pass the ball soft to the feet of my teammate, no problem. But when you have to put it inside the net, it's a different story. It's a different quality. And you got it or you don't. Sometimes you can, it happens. But, you know, to, to score a goal or to place it in a, with the right pace to the net is one thing. To your teammate is another thing, for me at least. Me. To my teammate is not a problem, but to the net, it's a different thing. And especially the penalties where you walk, you know, there are a lot of things that happens. You know, that walk from the middle of the pitch to the to take the ball and put it there, and no easy, no easy for me. It was no easy at all. You, you were brave enough to be one of the, the, the first five to, to take the penalty. Um, but what number were you, Kieran? I was number five. You were number I five. Didn't, didn't even get round to taking it. And I'll no, never awesome. forget it. And this just sums up how crazy Adam Tanner was. I probably had a nightmare of a game. So the game was built like this is a great test for Kieran and Richard Wright. And we probably had our, we were probably Ipswich's worst two players that day. So I'm already pissed off with myself then. And I'm going to take the fifth. And I think someone goes up to take the penalty. And he was like, if he misses this, you've got to score your penalty to keep us in the cup still or something. Like a second before I'm going to go up there and take the penalty, putting me under even more pressure as an 18-year-old. But obviously, um, they're probably me not taking one. I probably would have missed because that would have summed up my evening. I didn't play very well at all. But then... When I signed for Newcastle and Rude Huller, he said that I was one of the players that stuck out to him that day. And it's just like bananas football because I thought I was useless. Absolutely useless. 
that Mark Hughes took the win and penalty for for Chelsea, and uh, it was in front of the Churchmans. And I I know as soon as he walked up that that was mm. game over. He he stuck that right in the back of the net. Well, they, they had they had some players that can take penalties. Eh? <laughs> oh my God, they were all taking penalties for their national teams. See it. Not only for their teams, for the national teams. <laughs> so it makes a difference. It makes a difference. Did you know Gus Pouillet before that game? Or did you know him or you knew him many years after? No. Yeah. No, I, I, I met him when we played against each other. I met him, had a quick chat with him. Going outside to play Tottenham Chelsea. Uh, like saying, hi, how are you? That's mm. it. And then I met him when he came to, to Spurs. Yeah. From Chelsea. No, no, not before. Okay. And then the rest is history. Yeah, then we became good friends. We are good friends. Yeah, good. 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 In in January it was signed Jamie Clapham. Um obviously, you know, but cover for your position possibly. And uh you received I think you only got sent off for us once, Mauricio, which is a which is a bit of a shock. And I've gone back and double checked, but you certainly got sent off away to Away to Stoke City with a, a so, two, yeah, I remember yeah, that one. Two yellow cards. Now only once. Yeah, I know. I, I'm used to pick that right. up after I should. Before. I should put that right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that well, that that was definitely on the seventh of February, and and I think that well, the suspension you had. I'm, I must say there was no VAR at the time, so I got away with a <laughs> hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, th I think that meant that you missed Norwich City at home when we beat them 5-0 I think you were suspended for for that game uh, but yeah. moving towards the end of that season like it always is for Ipswich Town fans it would seem we're, we're in the playoffs again we're at home to, to Charlton uh, we got drawn against Charlton um, just wonder if you remember anything about Danny Mills' uh, tackle on you in that game which got him sent off no no, no much, no. No, I don't remember that. I, I remember fighting with a, with a winger at the time. That was Heaney, on was it Heaney? Man Heaney? Is there a player Heaney, called Heaney? From Man City. Yeah. He, he, we had an incident after <laughs> the game. I don't know if you remember. I can remember. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, again, that's an incident that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Mm. So, we... They, uh, but Charlton... The, we talked about the Sheffield United game. I thought over the two legs, we were probably the better team, especially at the home leg. Uh, we lost that game, but Charlton over the two legs, they just did an absolute number on us. We didn't play. Yeah. We were... Yeah. We, uh, yeah. we didn't play with any... Yeah, we didn't... Um, yeah, they... Yeah. I don't know what happened. I, don't, I just... That's one of the big mysteries to me. We were so poor in both games. Even... 1-0 down going to the valley in the second leg. We just was just had nothing, nothing about us. Just like, yeah. what? Yeah. Still to this day, I still I sometimes think back, just going, where was the... I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because we did suffer, if I can remember rightly, we started off that season so slow and it took us a massive effort to get into the playoffs. And it was like, maybe we put so much energy trying to get into the top six that... We were flat as a pancake. Just couldn't believe yeah. it. Because I, I, I thought we'd beat Charlton. I really did. It's, um, look, I, I think playoffs is they're, they're finals. They're finals, um, and it's difficult if you're not used to the players are not used to playing finals. I think it takes a little bit of time to get used to being in that kind of. One off, no, you one off today. It's like a penalty. It's now. There's no another pass to correct the mistake. It's now. That can affect performances, I think. Mm. That's that's why I think the players that are more involved with finals, then you get used to, and it's another game, and you play like you always play. And you have the experience from years in the past, what happened. And then at the end, you know, I mean, the following year, we were flying. 
playing right. much better. Brilliant. And we were like, we were going to go straight up, not through the playoff. I mean, and we, I think we finished third the following yeah. year, right? My point, yeah. And um, if, if the season would have keep going for another two or three weeks, we would have gone up directly because it's, it's time, it's gelling, it's experience, and it's a lot of things. That, that needs to click. Yeah. 1998-99 was both your last seasons at, at, at Ipswich. I must um, say, going back to the 97-98 season, I don't know if Mauricio remember this, but me and you got voted by our fellow pros into the PFA Team of the Year. Yeah. You were left back and I was right back in the PFA Team of the Year, yeah. Hmm. Incredible, eh? With yeah. all the enemies I've done around the yeah. country. <laughs> <laughs> that they voted for me. Oh, my God. How? Oh. Uh, brilliant. <laughs> that, that, that is quite, a, quite an accolade. Um, you, you, you were our player, um, and I can imagine that lots of fans up and down the country, with all due respect, probably couldn't, couldn't stand you, but that's what made us love you more and I think you know the recognition that you got from your fellow pros was was great you scored your sixth and seventh your, your final goals um in a league cup game at home to Exeter we beat them 5-1 and you scored and then you scored a, a, a good goal against uh, Crystal Palace in October 1998 we won that 3-0 then very quickly in November 98 your last game at, at home to to Wolves at town were in second place I think you signed for Tottenham on the 5th of November. Uh, just kind of talk us all through what happened there, please. I, I didn't know. I played, I played against Wolves knowing nothing about it. And uh, then the days after, I came to know that there was an agreement between the clubs just before that game, really. <laughs> and I didn't know, incredibly. <laughs> uh, and then again and then it's you know then those are the situations that you are put in a position where you need to say okay what do I do uh, especially Spurs because Spurs had two Argentinians and you know very famous that went to Spurs years and years ago so it was kind of I have to go I have to go. Uh, it was tricky because we were flying. So it was a great opportunity to get up. Mm. But then sometimes the train go past once. And in football, you need to take the opportunities. That's how I see it. Maybe I'm wrong. Eh? Other people stay with the clubs and maybe they great. They have better careers even. But at the time, I thought I, it was a good opportunity and, uh, you know, I needed to make a decision. I made a decision. Uh, it was sad because I had a, at the end, I was so comfortable in Ipswich. My wife was there. My, my kid, well, my wife was pregnant. Uh, my kid was born there after in, in Ipswich still. Um, so, but... I got injured on that game against Wolves, uh, badly injured. It took me like six weeks. I didn't sign it straight away because I was waiting. I was doing the recovery with, uh, in Ipswich. Uh, and then the agreement went through anyway. I thought maybe it wouldn't because of the injury, uh, but it went through. And then history. Not many people know that Charlie Woods was the chief scout for Tottenham at the time. Yeah, very yeah. close to George Graham. Obviously, yeah. he loved you as a player. He also tried to get George Graham to sign me and Craig Bellamy that, that time as well. The three of us. Okay. Uh, George Graham said that me and Craig Bellamy were too small, but we're probably the same height as you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are, you are taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> so George Graham must have yeah. just thought you were better, well, Mauricio. That was it. So at the that. end of the day, you said it. I mean, George Graham did not sign me. Mm. Charlie, yeah. yeah. Charlie and the club. Yeah. George Graham maybe said, okay, 
you know, okay. Yeah. Maybe because he saw maybe one of my tackles and, you know, yeah. in the future, you know how he signed Ben, no? Thatcher. Yeah. Of course, yeah. So, um, I think so. Good. But of course, yeah, I mean, I was not the kind of player for... For George, even though, even though I must say that uh, he had a, some kind of like a bad publicity in, around him because the way the way he his teams played Arsenal, no close, dirty, no. Uh, but he also he wanted to play. He didn't want to defend like everybody said. He wanted to be organized. Mm -hmm. But he wanted also his team to play. And I think he didn't, the media uh, didn't uh, appreciate that from him. I thought George Graham wanted to play football as well, more than the media yeah. said. Yeah. 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 Mm. So we, we touched on it earlier in the show. Uh, obviously, your time at Ipswich, definitely Paul Mason, your favourite player to play with. Because you two, the like, play, yeah. yeah, the players that I connected easily yeah. without effort. You know those players that you, like I said, I remember getting a ball from wherever and looking up, and he was there. I was looking there because of the space being there, and he was running into that space without even talking about it. And mm. that's what that's why it makes it not not my favorite, but in terms of the connection we had, yeah. Brilliant. Because there's a stat, he, when the amount of goals he scored as a 30-year-old plus is incredible. I think he's in the yeah. top four in Ipswich Town's history. Yeah. Over yeah. 30. And you're talking about connections. I'm lucky enough to play for my country and thing, but the player I connected with most was Norberto Solano from Peru at Newcastle. We just had this. He was just, he could put the ball anywhere I wanted it. It was just... Yeah, I, I remember, know. yeah, playing against him. He was yeah. so intelligent and he had a yeah. one on the right foot. Yeah. And that that makes, I mean, that makes me look a better player mm. because of him. Mm. So I owe him maybe whatever happens in my career. Uh, that's something that a lot of people don't appreciate. They think if you're an individualist because of your physique, your strength, your, you know, that, you can play because you get the ball and you are so strong, so powerful, so quick. You don't need of anybody. But if you are a smart player with certain qualities, you need your teammates. Mm -hmm. And having the, that connection uh, is incredible because he becomes a better player because I gave, I gave him the ball. And he makes me look a better player because he's in the right position. Because if he's not there, then maybe I'm in 1v1 and I lose the ball. And you say, oh, you lost the ball. Come on, don't lose the ball. But I didn't lose the ball because he was in the right place. Yeah. Not because of me. Me it was just a simple pass, mm. if you know what I mean. Definitely. And did you prefer to play right back or left back? It's one of the great... Left back. Left back, yeah. Left back. Left yeah. back, yeah. Left back. At the beginning, when I started, I thought right back was my area. Uh, in the end, left back definitely, hundred um, percent. George Burley kind of hinted in his in his program notes that he he the decision was kind of made out, outside of he you know he didn't have a lot involved in that. Do you remember about the transfer and how how that was instigated? No, not at all because I I was not aware at all at all. Uh, I had no practically. I had an agent, but not really an agent pushing, pushing for, for a move or anything like that. I was okay. I was under contract. I was happy. My wife was pregnant. So I was playing and we were doing great. So I think it's something that maybe the, the club, something happened behind the scenes with Charlie and they agreed on a figure that it was great for the club after, you know, when you think what they paid for me and what they got for me three, four years later, I thought it was a good deal for the club. And But I was not really, 
aware of the situation. We, and we, we lasted the game we, with Wolves. We couldn't believe as players that we were sitting second in the league. Yeah. And you've sold one of our best players. We will. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why yeah. don't wait to the end of the season? Yeah. Like, yeah. There was a good. Yeah. There was talk that it could be my last season, Richard Wright's last season, but why not? Let's see where we go. Yeah. So we blame you for coming third that season and going to the playoffs. <laughs> 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 uh, well, I don't know. I mean, you, you have to also look at, I, I had no idea, but you have to also look at the finances of the football mm. club. Maybe they needed that money. I don't know. And mm. they, they were in a position that they had to, maybe. I'm not sure. I, I agree with you. It doesn't make any sense. I'm, and then I remember I was so happy because we were, we were playing well. We were winning. Not easily, but we were winning. You know, when you are, we're going to win. We're going to win next week. We're going to win. You, you go into that circle of winning that you think you're, you're going to win every game. Mm. So I remember that feeling. I say, it's a stop, no? Because now it's, Oh, I have a I have a decision to make. <laughs> but again, you don't know what happened behind the scenes. Did we buy Fabian with the money that we well not all the money, but did we get Fabian after Mauricio? Or... Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I, I do I, I do wonder whether it was money situation. I somehow bumped into David Sheepshanks. Um, and I remember having a quick conversation with him, uh, politely moaning that he'd sold my best player, my favourite player. And I remember he kind of put his arm across me over the wall and he went, shall I tell you something else? He said he was my favourite player too, but the deal had to go through. So I think it was probably hinting about money situation at the, at the time there, which was really sad. Um, Obviously, he went to Tottenham, 1.8 million. Um, this isn't a Tottenham podcast, so you'd be pleased, Mauricio, that we're we're coming towards the end. But you I did a good, bit... I've finished. I've got a good story about yeah. my first game against him in Tottenham. Well, I was going to say, you, you you did play a couple of times against against Ipswich. Do you remember that? It was the opening day of the season in the Premier yeah. League. Mark Venus scored. I think you came on as sub, and, and also you played at White Hart Lane when... Fanidi George and Alan Armstrong scored against you. What, how, how did it feel playing against Ipswich? Is is it any different when you when you're facing a team you used to play for? It was it wasn't comfortable, um, but again now, you know if you, I think you got to know me a little bit better if you didn't know me from before. Now I'm wearing white, and my fans now are there. <laughs> And they're looking at me and they're saying, we need to win. So there, there, is a, there is a feeling inside that is uncomfortable. But then when you go into the pitch, you, you need to perform for, for yourself, for your team, the same way as I did when I was wearing the Ipswich shirt. Uh, now that is history, I had a far better time and career at Ipswich than Spurs. Even though I played for Spurs and, and it was fine, it was a completely different club, completely different mentality. Um, as a man, I had a great time at Ipswich, not as good as, uh, as Spurs, which is in, in paper a bigger club, no? Premiership and whatever it is. But uh, that's it. That's, that's the truth. My third game for Newcastle, just so for Newcastle, we play Tottenham at White Hart Lane. Warren Barton's playing right back for Newcastle. I'm playing right wing. Down the left for Tottenham is Ginola left wing and Mauricio left back. <laughs> and they do a 3-1, but there was, I think it's the third goal where I'm ball watching and he runs off the back of me and he sets someone up and I'm like, oh my Ooh. God. He's killed me. He's absolutely killed me. <laughs> so you got the better of me in that time we played each other. 
But yeah, <laughs> it was lucky. It was you've just gone, lucky. You've gone from Paul Mason <laughs> to David Ginola. <laughs> yeah, but for example, yeah, the, you 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 take this uh, this uh, comparison. Uh, Ginola, in my opinion, he was the best individual player I play with. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But he didn't understand football. He didn't <laughs> understand football I, as I did. As yeah. I did, he understood his football. Yeah. But not my football. So I remember him. I, I remember because he was so powerful, skillful, right, left, physically an animal, an animal. Pro, the best player individually I played with. But he didn't want to know about anything. I, 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 many times I said to him, David, I get the ball. The right back is really pressed with you. Just turn and run. I dink it on top, and you go, you go, you go all the way to the goalkeeper. Say no, Dano, don't worry. You just give it to me to my feet. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. That was it. That was a bit. No, no, don't worry. You just give it to me, and I'll deal with it. And he had, you know, players on top of him. He would have get kicked. He, he, he didn't want to know. Yeah. Well, Paul would have been completely different because he didn't have that quality. Yeah. He would have to work harder. At where can I stand? Where can I be to get the ball under no pressure to be able to turn? So I think in a way that shows you that players that are physically amazing, they, they don't need to think too much about the game. Yeah. So that's why maybe they don't become... Amazing. Amazing, yeah. Yeah? Because if they would think a little bit about the game, on top of the just natural talent, they would be okay. you know, Barcelona players, Real Madrid players. Eh? I mean, these, these kind of clubs. I've done, a couple, suppose, of, I've done yeah. a couple of Sky appearances with David. And, uh, so, as it's coming to half time, we'll say like, I'll talk about the first goal. He'll talk about the second goal. Yeah. Or if there's a sending off, he yeah. knows nothing about any player on the pitch. So it's like a minute to go <laughs> before the break started. And he's talking about the second, and he'll go, who scored the second goal? What's his name again? And you're going, <laughs> it's the Premier League. How do you not know? And he's like writing down names and that. And I'm just like, and he's, he's doing a, TV. Bloody no world. <laughs> But he's got that Baba Rumini, they love it. So. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Oh, no, I, I, it, was, it, was, it was good to play with those players, of course, mm. because, I mean, you learn so much. So, mm. Sol Campbell, uh, Darren Anderton, Teddy Sheringham, I mean, great players. Les Ferdinand. Mm. Les, Les was my salvation. Because when you were under pressure, you just had to dink it in front of him. That's it. It's in the bank. Money, the ball is in the bank. Yeah. And it's, you know, playing with those kind of players, the quality, it gives you another, another way out. But at the same time, there's another issues with those kind of players. No? It's, it's, you, you, you take the good and maybe you get some bad and vice versa when, with Mason on the comparison with Mason. No? It's, it's, it's so clever that it's another another kind of player. Um, but it was, uh, in general, you know, it was great learning from everybody. Good. Yeah. We've, we've covered a few. I asked some, the, the fans if they wanted some questions and there, there was a common theme that came through and it's one of the reasons that, I, that you were my favourite player. But um, who did you enjoy kicking? Which, which players did you enjoy kicking? I, again, I, I didn't go in the pitch to kick somebody. I didn't. Maybe it looked like that from outside. I didn't. Uh, then situations were happening, or, or, or for example, I knew I was going to come again. I, I tell you two or three names that I remember perfectly that was a nightmare for me to play against them. Trevor Sinclair, for example. Why? Because he was so strong. I could, you kick him and he doesn't, he takes the kick like, like you, nothing. Mm -hmm. It was nothing. So, 
already I was going out in the pitch thinking I cannot get, you know, I need to be in the right position every time. I cannot go to sleep. I, I need to be strong with him, stronger than normal. Maybe it looks like a kick, but if I go like to with a normal player with that strength, it's like nothing. He will just with his hand hold me one meter away. You know, Damien Duff, for example, another one. Quick players, that, those complicated in my life, complicated it. Because in the 1v1s, I struggle. And that's, that was the, the, my letdown. There's nothing I could do. What, what I can I cannot grow 10 centimeters and build, you know, muscle, 10, ki, 10 more kilos in muscle. I can't. I mean, I'm, I'm what I am. Oh, I remember, I don't know. One day I done an interview and they were talking about maybe me, you know, trying everything to play football. And, and I was saying, what well, Thierry Henry? I mean, he's 190 and he does, like I said before, 100 meters in 10 seconds. He used to know now. It's scary. So how can I compete with these people? How can I fairly compete with these people? You tell me. That's one thing. So why... It's one yeah. thing people don't give that Arsenal team credit for. I remember the first time we played Arsenal, you stand in the tunnel. Burkamp is six foot. Henri is six foot. You don't realise how tall Pires is. They're all machines. We were probably technically the best players in the league. And you just, and Vieira is at the front. And you're just looking at them like that going. Exactly. Oh exactly. Vieira, I remember Vieira. You cannot get the ball around him because he will, with his legs and hands, it's like a spider. It's like a, a, I don't know. It's it's impossible. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. You need to play one touch. You need to change your the way you you play. Where imagine those players having the ball and having that facility, you know, in them. It's it's so much easy. Mm. So much easy because I cannot attack him. If I go, he will go past me. So I need to wait. That gives him time. Yeah, I don't have that time because he knows that he can come at me and I'm not going to go past him. So I need to play and, and around and be more clever and quickly, one touch, two touches, get rid of the ball. For that, you need your team in good positions. That's why, for example, coming back to Mason, being in the right place, if someone attacks me and Mason is already there, boom, I do one touch, bam, it's in Mason. That's it. I've done my job. Um, I'm a footballer. But if I don't have that exit, then I get trapped. And these, these people that like you mentioned, they trapped you. You don't get away then. You lose the ball. I lose the ball. Mm. Um, and these things that maybe people don't know, but maybe now they know a little bit more. How did Robert, uh, Robert Fleck in the, in the derby when you scored against Norwich, he, he came back with um, stud marks on the back of his... Uh, through his shirt. Do you remember how he got that? Because I think he might have uh, said that it was you. When was that? Robert In Fleck, eight... the big fat Norwich striker. <laughs> big fat. <laughs> it was maybe I was falling and I fall on top of him. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. well, I think so. It was, was it? an accident. Come on, it was an accident. The accident <laughs> happens. Uh, don't, don't, don't. Not every situation is. Me doing something wrong. I just want <laughs> just wanted to check that. Um, one last question has come up a lot. Um, have you ever been close to applying for the Ipswich Town manager's job with you and you and Gus? No, no. I, I don't see myself as a manager. I mean, that's not something that comes natural to me. Mm. You know, is uh, I'm. Uh, for gas is natural. Um, why I get, why I was happy to work with gas because we see football in a very similar way. Uh, I remember being here in Italy when he was not coaching yet, uh, and thinking it would be fantastic to get a team. We were talking and give the players what the managers did not give to us in a way, no? Just to treat players the way we wanted to be treated when we were players. Uh, and that's how 
when, when we started working and what we've done with Gus was that, was exactly that. She's giving the players what they want or what we wanted when we were players. It's quite, it's, it's kind of easy, you know, in, in, in the sense that, I mean, don't do to others what you don't want others to do to you, no? And basically this is one step further. It's just do to others what you want people to do to you. So basically that, that was the situation with us. And we started like that in, in Brighton. Uh, and there were many, many experiences where we, I mean, we had great, great relationship with the players because of this. The, the, at the end of the day, uh, we always said, the players are the most important people at the club, okay? Uh, the fans are super important. The chairman is super important. The coach is super important. But the ones that put the ball in the net are the players. So they are the ones. So you need to try, give them the best possible opportunity to perform. In my case, for example, I play a few games in Brighton for gas. It was unbelievable. It was so easy. Because he prepared the team in a way, or we prepared the team in a way that it, it suit my style. My style. There were always options to play. Always angles. All the players in the right areas at the right time. So you didn't have to compete. You didn't have to be powerful. Okay, the last third, the last third is the most difficult. The, yeah, there you need quality, you need the strength, you need, but 70% of the, from your goal to the 70% of the pitch, if you are in good position and you understand the game, it's so, you can play so well, so easy. It could be so easy and it was so easy. I remember games that I played for gas, saying gas is easier inside than outside because sometimes you see it from outside and I say, well, how, how he could not see that pass? But depending on the shape of the team and how he put the team on, on the pitch, it was so easy. Um, and that goes to a little bit to the coach, putting the team, depending on the players that he's got, okay? Adapting to a little bit to the players. And then obviously with his vision, the players trying to adapt to a little bit what he wants. But at the end of the day, the important thing is for me is to know that the players are the most important. Mm. Uh, I know it can be harsh. Germans don't want to hear that. You know, it's, there's a lot of Germans that have big egos. No, it's my team. Yeah, but if the striker doesn't put it in, you, you get relegated. Mm. Uh, yeah, you can go and buy another player. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you are important. Yeah, I'm not saying you are not important. But a lot of people don't like it. Um, we, we just say as uh, we see it. I just say uh, we, as I see it. Then try to be respectful. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> but if you analyze it, it's the way it is. Uh, it's, it's the same with the fans. I'm not saying the fans are not important. The fans are, the fans are, are always going to be there and are key. And they can help you turn the game around. And Yeah, but at the end... You know, the, if you put the ball in the center of the pitch and the, full, the, the stadium is full and the players don't go out, that ball doesn't move. Stays there, eh? 100%. Yeah. So, 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 if, uh, so if Gus rings you up six months down the line and says, the Ipswich job's available, I've got an interview, if I get it, would you come? Is it something I will, that, I will go I will go with gas because I felt so comfortable I always feel great with him he's honest he talks the truth um, coming back to the to the fact that why I don't see myself as a coach I think the, the or manager no. manager needs to I, I don't mind dealing with players I like it uh, I don't like dealing with the media I don't like dealing with politics. I don't like dealing with uh, uh, extra football stuff. 
I don't. I don't, and I will. I know I will with my character. I will. I will fall out. Yeah. Because I, you know, if if a chairman wants to hear himself or wants to hear from me that he's the most important, I'm sorry, I, I can't say it. I can't. I can't. Because you're not. In my opinion, you're not. You are so important. Everybody is important in a football club, but there are priorities in my list. Players are at the top. Yeah, good. Um, thank you, Mauricio. Um, very honest, and it's a great point to end. Players, players are at the top, um, and and you were certainly at the top of top of my list. And you'll be pleased to know that 25 years or so after that you've left Ipswich, that many many people think of you, um, and what a great player and respect everything that you've done. So thank you ever so much for for your time. Uh, wish you well in the future. Um, and look forward to seeing you somewhere or another in, in the in the dugout um, going forward. Thank you. So. I'm 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 honoured that you say that, but I'm just normal. Yeah? I'm nothing special. You're Don't Superman. Worry. You're Superman. Yeah, I just, I just, I just, I just, no, I just play a little bit of football thanks to the players that were around as well that helped me to achieve what I what I achieved. Um, and, nothing more. And last summer, Mauricio, I did a. Um... I did a one to 11, the best 11 that players had played with at Ipswich and everyone who had played with you, you made their 11 as well. So you were talking about accolades from your, you've had the fans perspective. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you were in Richard Wright's, Scoey's, Moggers, Vino's, everybody. So everybody, you weren't left out of anyone's team. <laughs> no, well, it's, it's uh, again, an honour. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't see myself like that I just again I, I played to win and I gave my all then I I tried to help that's all then he went as he won yep okay and hopefully thank see you, you back here. switch thank you for thank you for wearing those shirts yeah. <laughs> Much appreciated. what's on the back of your shirt Kieran this is 20 years Anetti. 20 years we played them in the World Cup and uh, I didn't get on against Argentina uh Beck scored the penalty, Pochettino brought down Michael Owen and we, I got drug tested, me and Trevor Sinclair and Zanetti was crying, he was that devastated, you know, the will to win and yeah. he, was, he obviously was in there and he was crying I felt, this is awkward, but so I just kind of pited like the hand gesture you want to swap shirts and I got one of the greatest <laughs> good, 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 good so I had to run you need to do my old shirts you need to do me a favour yeah one day, if you go across David Beckham, yeah. you need to tell him it was never personal. Uh, <laughs> it was never idea. personal. <laughs> yeah. That's but, I mean, to... if he listens a little bit and he, if he listens yeah. what I'm saying, it was never personal with anybody. It was just my way. Yeah, but I, I, didn't, I didn't have it with anybody in particular. I just was a little bit nuts to win. That's it. Brilliant. But if, like you said, if I would have played with him, I would have gone to bed for him. Of course, yeah. But anyway. Yeah, brilliant. Some people understand it, some people don't. It's the way it is. Brilliant. Oh, okay? What a brilliant way okay. to end. Thank yeah. you, Mauricio. Thank you very much. No, it was a pleasure.